What's going on everyone welcome to your 67th Java tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be finishing this program demonstrating J radio buttons so where we left off on the last tutorial we pretty much made four different kinds of fonts and now what we need to do is pretty much take that text field and we need to set it equal to a font by default and we just need to set it equal to a font by default so when the program runs for the first time it knows what font to use so I'm going to set it equal to plain font because I'm just a plain old guy. Um, you can set it equal to different font if you want, but I ain't gonna. So now what we need to do is pretty much create an add item listener for each button. So I'm going to take that plain button first and add item <coughs> listener just like that. <coughs> fun, 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 fun. There we go. I got clear out my throat. And the parameter this add item listener takes is going to be this get out of my way new handler class and for the constructor we're going to pass in the plain font now what happens is this an add item listener pretty much chills there and waits for something to happen to that item which is in this case the plain button now whenever it does happen what do we want the object because this is an object in here and what do we want it to do well for the handler class it's going to be handling it or it's pretty much the code that's going to happen if this button is clicked we need to pass in plain font to the constructor and let me go ahead and add a comment so this wait for event to happen and this is what this does and pass in font object to constructor and we didn't even create a class or constructor yet so this might be confusing but I spelled constructor wrong see this this uh, thing if I click it it's not only um, a platform but it also is a spell checker so since I spelled constructor wrong it corrected it for me how cool is that compiler and a spell checker double banger so now let's go ahead and add this for um, well the rest of them copy this and put that's for a bold button, italic button, and bold and italic button. So bold button, uh, let's see, italic button is IB, and bold and italic button. And of course, we need to change these to bold font. And I said, italic font was ITF, and the bold and italic font was that. So now we pretty much got our constructor of our main class built. Now we can go ahead and we're getting this error message because handler class is not a class yet. So let's change that right now. Let's go ahead and make a handler class. And we're going to put this inside the other class. So let's go ahead and make private class handler -er class right there. No, my sound didn't mess up. I actually just said that. Implements item listener. And you guys know what implements means from the last tutorials. So inside my handler class, the first thing I'm going to want to do is create a variable since, uh, you know, we're just gonna need one. It's gonna be a font variable and it's set it equal to the name of font because I mean makes sense, right? The next thing I'm gonna want to do is create that constructor that we used up here. Now as you can see that constructor takes a font object as its argument. So we gotta make sure we have a font object as argument when we create it. So let's go ahead and name public handler class and let's go ahead and put like font and just name it F or something so now plus sign WTF so now in our constructor for this and let me make sure yep looks right to me let's go ahead and just add font and set it equal to F <clears throat> and now let's see what error I'm getting oh I must inherit the abstract method item listener item state change so since we use item listener it has a method in it called item state change that we need to use. So let me add a comment to here. And what this does is the font object gets variable font. This is pretty much just changing the object we pass in to the variable font. So now that we implemented from item listener, we need to use that method called item state change. So let's go ahead and make a new method called public void doesn't return anything. Item state changed and if I spelled that right we should be good 
So now this argument takes the item event and we'll just name it event. And for this in the body, let's just go ahead and have something like text font and we'll set it equal to set font for that font. So now if I do this, my errors should go away, but they're not. So I'm going to pause it and figure out what's wrong. Okay, guys, I found my error, and it was really embarrassing. Actually, for the constructor of handler class, I put hander class, and I spelled it wrong. So you definitely need to put handler class and spell your constructors right. Pretty embarrassing, if you ask me. So, you know, I'm not going to let it happen again, I promise. So now that we got all that changed, let's go ahead and... Well, I'll pretty much I'll add a comment for this for ease of reading. Um, we'll put sets the font to the font object that was passed in. Looks good. So, well, let me go ahead and run this. Then I'll talk you guys through it. So I'm just going to use my same object from last tutorial. If you didn't watch my last tutorial, then pause the video right now and copy that. And I'm just going to go ahead and run this, and hopefully it works. So now we got Bucky is awesome as hot. Uh huh. Thank you. And it's playing by default, like we said before. And now you can see these radio buttons, since they're part of a group. <clears throat> then whenever we click one, then the rest uncheck. And that is because they are part of a group and they're able to see each other or know what each other is doing. And that's some built in um, methods that allow you to do that. So that's pretty cool right there. So let me talk you guys one last time through how we did this. Well, let's see. Let's just get to the hard stuff. We made variables. We added uh, we added all the stuff to the screen right here. Bam. Here's the confusing stuff. Aside from adding all the stuff to the screen, here's what we did. We pretty much need to add add item listener to each button so that something can sit on those buttons and wait for it to be click or unclick. Now, add item listener, this built in method, it takes this handler class object as a parameter. So, what this is, is pretty much saying, all right, we're going to be waiting for something to happen. And as soon as it clicks, then I'm going to call this class right here. And that's the code that's going to happen when this event happens. So, now that we told it, all right, we want you to wait for something to happen. And when it happens, do this we said all right what do we want to do well we created a new handler class and the constructor for that class is called handler class of course and it takes a font object so let's go ahead and look at that constructor right now the constructor all it does is it gets that font which was plain font and sets it equal to the name font or the variable font and why do we need to set it equal to this variable so we can use it later on to set the font so pretty much we took that font set it equal to the word font and then in the item state change which pretty much is the event that happens when it's clicked it takes that font and sets it equal to plain font bold font italic font or plain and bold font or excuse me bold and italic font so now that we have a constructor and our item state changed we're good to go and we were able to run the program so that's your real quick tutorial of radio buttons and the last thing that you guys don't want to forget don't forget to group your buttons right here set it equal to new button group objects in this group allows your buttons to be one big family and allows them to see what each other is doing and this lets them know when each other is, is selected or deselected so that's that for this tutorial hope you guys learned a little something not too much of course so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe don't forget to check out all my contests and I will see you next time.